Have you ever pondered over the origin of the universe? The universe, a cosmos so vast, so unending that it boggles our minds. It's a cosmic stage where galaxies dance, stars are born and die, and planets teem with life. It's a place of endless mysteries, a place where the laws of physics as we know them are stretched to their limits and often broken. Imagine, if you will, a cosmic tapestry woven with billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars, many of which are orbited by planets. Some of these celestial bodies are so far away, their light takes billions of years to reach us. We are, in essence, looking back in time, witnessing cosmic history unfold. But where did it all come from? How did this vast, intricate universe come into being? This is a question that has intrigued and baffled the greatest minds throughout history. Theories abound, each attempting to explain the origin of the universe in its own way. Some suggest a cosmic explosion, a Big Bang, that set everything in motion. Others propose a cyclical universe, one that expands and contracts in an endless loop. And then there are those that postulate the existence of multiple universes, a multiverse, each with its own set of physical laws. Yet, one question remains, a question that is as perplexing as it is profound. If the universe came from nothing, where did nothing come from? It's a question that takes us to the very edge of our understanding, forcing us to reevaluate what we mean by nothing and something. It's a question that challenges our understanding of the nature of existence itself. After all, how can something emerge from nothing? And if it did, what was this nothing? Was it truly nothing? Or was it something that we simply don't understand yet? To delve into this enigma, we first need to understand what nothing means in the context of the universe. As we journey deeper into the cosmos, hold tight, for we are about to embark on a quest to unravel the greatest mystery of all time, the origin of the universe. So, what does nothing mean in the context of the universe? Let's unravel this concept, shall we? You see, the term nothing is a bit of an enigma in the world of cosmology. In our daily lives, Nothing might signify the absence of something tangible. An empty bag, a vacant chair, a silent room. But when it comes to the universe, nothing takes on a whole new meaning. In the grand cosmic scale, nothing can be interpreted as a vacuum, a seemingly empty space. But here's where it gets interesting. This empty space is not truly void or bereft of anything. Instead, it's a buzzing stage for a fascinating phenomenon known as quantum vacuum fluctuations. Now you might be wondering, what on earth are quantum vacuum fluctuations? Well, they're a bit like a cosmic magic show. In this show, pairs of virtual particles, a particle and its antiparticle, spontaneously pop into existence and then annihilate each other, disappearing back into the vacuum. These fleeting particles are like phantoms, appearing and vanishing in the blink of an eye. But their existence, however brief, means that our nothing, our vacuum, is not truly empty. But how can something as vast as the universe spring from nothing? Well, to tackle this question, let's dive into the realm of the Big Bang Theory. This well-accepted cosmological model suggests that our universe began as a singularity, a point of both infinite density and temperature. Yes, you heard it right. Infinite. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? This singularity didn't occupy space because at that time, there was no space to occupy. It didn't exist in time because, you guessed it, there was no time either. What we perceive as the vast expanse of the universe today was once compacted into a single infinitesimally small point. But here's the big question. How could this singularity, this everything, have emerged from nothing? This is where the concept of quantum fluctuations comes into play. In the quantum world, the world of the very, very tiny things behave differently. Particles and antiparticles can pop into and out of existence. It's like a cosmic magic show, where the magician is the laws of quantum mechanics. Now imagine for a moment that this nothing, this quantum vacuum, is not truly empty. It's a bubbling, boiling soup of these particles and antiparticles popping into and out of existence. It's possible that one of these quantum fluctuations could have resulted in the singularity that led to the Big Bang. You may wonder, isn't this a violation of the law of conservation of energy? Well, not exactly. You see, the energy of the particles could be balanced out by the negative gravitational energy of the universe, leading to a net energy of zero. 
It's a mind-boggling concept, but that's the beauty of quantum mechanics. Yet, this brings us back to our original question. Where did this nothing come from? To delve into that, let's journey further into the world of cosmology and quantum physics in our next segment. If nothing is not truly empty, where did it originate? This is the question that has puzzled cosmologists and philosophers alike for centuries. Let's delve into some theories that attempt to answer this enigma. One of the most intriguing is the concept of the multiverse. This is the idea that our universe with its own unique version of nothing is not alone. Instead, it is just one among an infinite number of universes, each with its own nothing. You can imagine it like an endless cosmic quilt with each patch representing a different universe. In this multiverse theory, nothing isn't a singular concept. Each universe could have its own distinct version of nothing, each with unique properties and behaviors. This is a mind-bending idea, but it's one that some physicists believe could hold the key to understanding the origin of nothing. Another theory suggests that nothing is a state of quantum fluctuation. In the quantum world, Particles and antiparticles can spontaneously pop in and out of existence. This might be hard to imagine, but it's a well-established phenomenon in quantum physics. Could this strange quantum soup be the origin of nothing? It's also worth noting that while these theories are fascinating, they're still just that theories. They're based on our current understanding of physics, which, as history has shown, is always evolving. As we continue to explore the cosmos and probe the mysteries of the universe, our understanding of concepts like nothing will inevitably change and grow. It's also possible that the true origin of nothing is something we haven't even thought of yet. Maybe it's a concept that our human minds, bound by our experiences in this universe, aren't capable of comprehending. Or perhaps it's a mystery that will always remain just out of reach, a tantalizing puzzle for future generations to solve. These theories, while fascinating, still leave us with more questions than answers. But isn't that the beauty of science? Even when we think we've reached the end of the road, there's always another unexplored path waiting to be discovered. So, if the universe came from nothing, and nothing is not truly empty, where does this leave us? We find ourselves in a fascinating paradox, standing at the frontier of human knowledge, peering into the abyss of the universe's greatest mysteries. We've journeyed together through the cosmos, tracing back the origins of the universe, grappling with the elusive concept of nothing. Recall that nothing is not quite the emptiness we imagined it to be. It is not a void devoid of existence, but a seething, bubbling quantum soup teeming with potentiality from which our universe could have sprung. This nothing is a cosmic seedbed, a nursery for universes, including our own. But what of the origin of this nothing? we delved into the philosophical and scientific conundrums surrounding its inception. If nothing gave rise to something, the universe, then what or who created nothing? It's a question that leads us down a rabbit hole of infinite regress, an endless cycle of questions upon questions. We asked, if the universe came from nothing, where did nothing come from? But that question merely invites another. What created the creator of nothing? And on and on the cycle goes. Each answer birthing a new question, each solution weaving a new mystery. It's an intellectual carousel, forever spinning, forever intriguing. Yet in this dizzying dance of questions and answers, we find the essence of our quest. The pursuit of knowledge, the thirst for understanding, the insatiable curiosity that drives us to explore the cosmos and its mysteries. The beauty of the universe lies not in the answers we find, but in the questions we ask, the mysteries we uncover the secrets we tease out of the cosmic tapestry. Perhaps the true beauty of the universe lies in its mysteries, the questions that keep us searching for answers, reminding us that there is always more to learn, more to discover, 